so what percentage are we finding? What percent of something is of something else? What are we finding? We're not finding what percentage 56 is of 80 we're finding. Uh, that's just another way to say that. You're saying what this says, right? Percentage of, what percent of 80 is 56? What are we finding by taking 80 and dividing it by 56? Find the percentage that 56 is of 80. We do 56. Um, you can think of as the. You can think of this as the part, and this as the whole, because usually that's how percentages work, right? They have a, a smaller amount than the whole, and we want to find the percent that that is, right? It's going to be something between zero and 100, right? zero percent and 100. Um, so that would be correct. But what? Corbin here has done is 80 over 56, which is what percent 80 is of 56, which is kind of weird. Because usually we think that percentages will just be between 0 and 100. But if you make $56 and your friend makes $80, your friend made 143% of what he made. 100% would be all of it, completely the same as you, and 43% <coughs> more than that, or than 43%. Okay, so this will find, uh, let's see, what percent of 56 is 80. That's what we're finding when we do it the other way around. Um, what about the answer 143? Corbin have said 143%. That doesn't seem right. What about that should make him think that? Because 56 is less than 80, so how could it be a zero hundred percent? Right. 100%. I think we all have a, a fairly general grasp of the fact that 100% is all of it, all of something. 56 is not all of 80, and it's certainly not more than all of 80, so how could it be 100% and a little bit more? It would need to be less than 100% at least. And we, know, we, not have, we might have any clue what percent 56 is of 80, but we know it's not all of it. We know it's not more than all of it. We know it's not 100% or more. It's less than that. But that at least should have uh, told Corbin, hey, something's up here. Okay. So 56 over 80, what percent does that give us? 27. 27, so 70%? Percent mean. Per cent. Per one hundred. Right? Per, in other words, per, per hour, per minute, per second, per whatever. Per cent is per hundred. So when we write per cent, we really mean seventy per one hundred. Right? Seventy divided by a hundred. Or point seven if you write it at the decimal. So fifty six is less. Ramona has solved this percent problem incorrectly. Okay. So I don't want you to tell me what to do, how to do it correctly necessarily right now. I want you to say what she's doing here, 7 times 0.28, what has she just found? That's what I want you to write down in your notes. What has she found? What has she found by doing 7 times 0.28?
0.7 and 0.28. And in terms of percents, what did she find? Is, okay, so is this answer a percent? No, the answer's not a percent. This answer's just a number, right? 0.97. How's 1.96 related to 7? Multiply the number, multiply the number, I multiply the number by 0.28. What would you try and find if you multiply by 0.28 as far as percent is concerned? So you took the, the, the percentage of human decimal form, 0.28, multiplied by 7. When we put the percentage in decimal form, we multiply it by a number, and we just found 100%? This is a percent? Well, typically, it's not just another percent. It's a, it's a number. So what we've done is by multiplying 7 by 0.28, and you multiply a number by 0.28, Take 28 percent, turn it into 0.28, and multiply it by a number. You just found what percent did you just find in that number? Is it because they found 28 percent of seven? That's yeah, that's what I was looking for. They found 28 percent of seven. That's not what they said. That doesn't say find 28 percent of seven, right? But this this can help us if we realize that's a mistake. So uh, just really quickly, what has she found? 28 percent of seven. That's what she found. It's not what she. If I did want 28% of a number, though, <coughs> if I wanted 28% of a number, how would I find 28% of some number? Jada? Exactly right. Take 0.28 times some number. Let's just call it x, some number. Okay. Whatever number you want to find 28% of, you just multiply that number by 0.28, by the decimal. Um, okay. So, in this case, we're finding 28% of a number, and what do we find is our answer? According to the statement of Kira, or this question of Kira. Found 28% of a number, and that came out to be how much? No. Um, that might be about true. Um, we found 28% of, let's say, some number, and what did we get? of some number is 7. You want to find that number. So 25 or 28% of some number, 28% or 428 times some number should give you say it out loud. 7. Okay. So do we multiply 7 by 0.28? No. Really, we don't. We want this number. So how are we going to get this number by itself? Divide by 0.28. Divide by 0.28. Divide both sides. Sarah, I'm gonna, you say you did this and you got 25? 25. Yeah. 25. Okay. Now, if Ramona understands the question that 7 is 28, is the result, it is the percentage of some number. Right? There's some number out there that 7 is 28% of. What about this answer? You tell Ramona something is fishy.
that they have a problem. That seven is 28% of something. Seven's not 28% of a number that's smaller than seven. We don't at least have to get a number that's bigger than seven, even if we have no idea what that number is. Seven is 28% of some number, so that some number has to be bigger than seven to really be. Um, and if we were to kind of guesstimate this, 28%, even if we rounded that down to 25%, just because we're used to that, about half, what, what fraction is 25%? is how much of the whole? 25 over 100. 25 over 100, which then applies down to? Four. Four. One, 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 Seven is, even if we do a, a gross estimation of 25%. If seven is, if it were 25% of something, that number would have to be around four times bigger than seven. Right? Somewhere in that neighborhood. Um, a little bit smaller because we have, like seven's a bigger percentage. It's not small down as much as 25%. Somewhere in the neighborhood of four times of what seven is. And 25 is not far off, right? 28 is four times seven. Just a, a few off. So seven is 28% of some number. You should expect that number to be bigger than seven, and you can even guesstimate it to be around 28. Uh, it should be about four times as big as seven. So what about this answer? Well, it's, it's smaller than seven. to solve this incorrectly. This is a mistake that I see a lot of people making. It's very common. So let's address it and hopefully um, you know, it makes an alarm go off in your head next time you try to do this. So Dennis first chooses to divide by 18, okay, which you can do. You can divide by 18 on both sides. If that's what you want to do, you just do it on both sides. Just do it correctly. How does he do it un incorrectly? Why don't you write down, write down in, in words, multimodal learning here. We're talking, we're reading, we're writing. drive themselves. by 18, which this side's being divided by 18, and you're going to divide the whole thing by 18. Okay. So if you're going to do it, just do it correctly. Let's see what that looks like. Okay. 18x minus 2y equals 26. We divide both sides by 18. That means we're dividing both of these things by 18. We distribute division just like we do multiplication. 2y over 18. x minus y and 9 equals 13 over 9. So now that we've actually
actually done division by eight incorrectly, it's not as attractive as we thought it might be, right? Because now we've got these, these denominators. Um, so we could choose to say, well, that's fine. I don't trust in fractions. I'll just go ahead and solve it this way. Certainly uh, should feel welcome to do that. Um, so well, let's first say that uh, it didn't. Higher left side. Let's just say that. If you're not writing these down with your own hands, in your own handwriting, you're not getting the full experience. Okay? Instead of dividing by 18, would you choose to start differently? Would you guys choose to do something differently to start? Since you're dividing by 18. Just you. Take a quick second to write it down. Before you write it down. Started with 18x minus 2y <coughs> equals 26. Instead of dividing by 18, you choose to do something else. Show my hands. Give me a wave. Subtract 2y. Let's investigate that. Okay, I'd like to get rid of that 2y. So if you subtract 2y, oh, add 2y. 18x equals uh, 26 minus, no, plus 2y. Now we can actually like deal with fractions. This one, we, we could have done this. It's almost done, really. We can add y, y over 9 to both sides in this one. So that's what we have here. x equals 13 over 9 plus y over 9. They have a common denominator, so we could write it as 13 plus y over 9. And this one, what would we do with this on this step? What would we do next? We get our sites out. Divide everything by 18. Now we divide by 18. At some point, we're going to divide by 18, but it's certainly easier to do it at this point. 26 plus 2y over 18. Okay. We have one, two, three terms. All three of these, if we could simplify them to share a factor, do all of these share a factor? 26 and 2y and Yes or no, they share a factor of nine. Two, they do share a factor of two. 13 plus y over nine. You gotta divide them all by two. Okay, so let's add two y to both sides. Solving this guy for w, the last one, get it correctly. She divides by LH on both sides, L times H. And how can Gwyneth be sure that dividing by LH will leave W by itself? Right? In your own words, or maybe just show the work. Maybe you just want to show how it works out in a fraction, or whatever. But uh, write something down. Maybe this is one full part of your brain. Put you in an MRI right now and see the writing part of your brain lighting up. like they can state this for us. Why, how can we be so sure that uh, dividing by LH is going to get W by itself? Because if you divide by LH, it cancels them out. Cancels out your L and H. Okay? So, uh, we'll say L cancels L. Itself, in other words, that would be B over 
tell this fish. Okay, the reason I ask this though is because um, we get a little too crazy with the canceling. In this case, it's correct. The L does cancel L and H does cancel H. But there are times, especially when we have addition or subtraction in the numerator or the denominator and we just start canceling way too much. Um, we say the numerator and denominator have common factors of L H. It sounds like maybe just the same as what's being said here, but the reason why they cancel, cancel is a nebulous, uh, vague word, and we don't really specify what it means. Because okay. L, if you cancel with L in a numerator denominator situation, then L if you cancel L when you do L minus L. Right? We use the same word for both things. One's division and one's subtraction. And uh, so that cancel is not very well defined. But here is uh, one way we could write it that we can do from this. We could write like LHW over LH. We could do LH over LH times W over one. Is this, well, is this the same as that? Why is this the same as that? Yeah, if we want to be thankful, we say multiplication has the what property? What are those properties? The multiplication and addition has A and B. It starts with a C. Something that starts with a C, maybe if you don't have it. Commutative. Commutative, thank you. Means you can switch the order of the multiplication if you want to. Okay? Um, and is this, the product of these two fractions, is that the same as this? Go ahead and answer that for you. Yes, it is. Why is it? Why is this the same as that? How can you convince me that this is, is equivalent to that? Because when you first solved it, say because when you multiply fractions, you just multiply straight across, yeah. right? And if we multiply straight across, we got L times H times W, that's what that is. L times H times one, which we don't have here. Okay. Now, it's only truly when we can write it like this that we can do that canceling out thing, right, in a numerator or denominator. If you're not able to write it this way, then you're not able to cancel it out. Um, but here we have now LH divided by LH. What's a number divided by itself? Two divided by two, four divided by four. One. one. Right, this is one. And one times w is w. You think I'm overthinking this. But when you start to try and cancel things out in fractions that don't cancel, I'm gonna bring you back to this and remind you that we need to be able to write it this way or it won't cancel. Okay? They have to be common factors. Meaning the thing you're trying to cancel has to be multiplied by all this other stuff in the numerator. All right. Okay, so that's, I think, yeah, my last question to the quiz. Is there any other questions from the homework? I'm not sure how to solve for myself. that isn't x. Danielle. Okay, multiply by a over 1 on both sides. Just to be sure, I'm just going to do what I did in a previous, a 
the last quiz question and make sure that it does cancel. I can write this as AX over A, AX over one times A, and then I can rewrite it as A over A times X over one. It'd be the same thing. If I multiplied these together, I would get AX over A, and A divided by A is one, so X is by itself. Multiply these straight across, you get B A over C. That's our first part. So solve the literal equation. Um, then next it says use it to solve the uh, specific equation. So that is x over x over eight equals four point five over twelve. So what they're they're doing here, <coughs> which is a useful skill in general, but these examples are a little bit silly. Um, but they're what I have to work with. They're saying any equation that's like this, where you have an unknown value there divided by some, something else equals another fraction, it can always be solved by doing b times a over c. Okay, b was this guy right here, uh, a was the denominator over here with x, and c was the denominator on this side. Okay, that's pretty cool. And sometimes you have a particular kind of equation that you wind up solving over and over and over, all the same kinds of equations, over and over. You want to notice a pattern and then uh, take advantage of that pattern. Okay, so the pattern in this, where you have an unknown in the numerator and you're dividing by something equal to fraction, you can always take the denominator from one side times the numerator on the other side divided by the uh, denominator over here. So here's b, 4.5 times 8, the denominator from the other side, over 12. Solving for x. And that's by itself. There it is, there's x, it's multiplied by 3, and we're adding 4 to it. And we're going to do whatever it takes to get x by itself. So what can we do first? Subtract 4. We subtract 4. 4 minus 4 is 0. 2 minus 4 is negative 2. And we're at plus 6y dx. side by 3, negative 2 plus 6y over 3 equals 3 divided by 3 is x. Okay. And I don't fully, fully love what I'm about to tell you, but I'm trying to give you the quickest answer uh, to hopefully stop a really common mistake. <coughs> this common mistake would be to cancel the 3 with the 6 get negative 2 plus 2y. Okay. I could go into all this stuff about fractions and when we can cancel things and have other factors and all that kind of stuff, but I'll tell you, short and sweet. If you're going to cancel something out, you need to be able to cancel it with this term and this term and this term. And terms are separated by plus and minus. Okay. So if you have plus and minus up here in the numerator, not just multiplication, you got to be able to cancel that factor up here, here, and there and everywhere else within the term. So if you see addition and subtraction, look at those as individual terms, and if you're gonna cancel something out, cancel it on all the terms, okay? So since there is no common factor between three, six, and two, we're not gonna cancel anything out, we're just gonna leave it just like that, negative two plus six y over three. Our only other option is that we could do negative two over three plus six y over three, if we were to put those together, we can because I'm a common denominator, and that's what we would get. Common denominator of 3, we just add the numerators together. And now we can get negative 2 thirds plus 6y divided by 3 would be 3y. And writing it that way kind of shows you why everything needs to share the same factor. Because if 
red as uh, red shows the first uh, black piece of black. Okay. Any other questions? Uh, we'll pass another one.